Well, Armored Core 6 was finally announced after a long, over nine-year hiatus, and the announcement was such an awesome wake-up call for me and other Armored Core fans. In the circles I frequent online, there are regular matches for every generation of Armored Core game on a daily basis, and that's really cool. As well as a lot of new and old players coming into play, we're truly entering into a new age for Armored Core. For the longest time, I can only remember just people uh, being hopped up on uh, Cope and Hope, trying to, you know foreseeing to the future that a new Armored Core 6 would just be right around the corner, you know, one year, and the next year, and the next year, and uh, no results really getting by, but it's finally here. So, uh, thank you, From Software. But, for now, I'd like to take a brief look back at the series now that I've finished playing through it, and give a ranking based on my personal enjoyment and engagement with the series, and to start, we gotta take it all the way back to the beginning. Armored Core 1 is the foundation of the series, and it is excellent. Even today, with this dated control scheme, which wasn't difficult to get used to after the first 5 or 10 minutes of play, I actually ended up starting with the Xbox 360 PS3 titles as my intro into the Armored Core series. But going back from that to Armored Core 1 wasn't really big of a change at all, it was quite easy. The game is great, and you take on a good variety of missions, and the core mechanics are solid. Experimenting with different mech parts and weapons, seeing how effective it is in each mission is fun and rewarding. Movement is precise and snappy, both on the ground and while boosting in the air. And the story, while very simple and mostly told through mission briefings and emails you receive throughout the game, is cool for what it is. The music is really fantastic too. Classic Japanese techno and house really bring the style of the game together and is a joy to listen to even when you're not playing the game. Expect me to bring up soundtracks a lot throughout this tier list because I think that Armored Core soundtracks are really integral to the whole experience. The game is just flat out solid, and I'm putting it right in A tier where it belongs. It's not my all time favorite, but it is truly a good game. Armored Core Project Phantasma is the follow-up to the original, and it's okay in its own right. It's the first title to add an arena mode, which becomes a staple in the series, which is a great addition, alongside more parts and a brand new campaign, which, in all honesty, while some of the missions were fun and had a little bit more uh, interpersonal interaction when it came to characters in the story, a good portion of the missions just felt sort of one note and simple. But it does get a bit better near the end. I kind of consider it to be a footnote, but it's not terrible by any means, even if it is rough around the edges on the story slash mission department, but it doesn't quite hit that level of engagement for me personally. So, for this one, I'm placing it in C tier. I don't really find any replay value for this game, aside from taking a look at some funny quirks in here and there. But what's great is, the next one certainly makes up for it. Armored Core Master of Arena is the final entry in the first generation of the series, and it's great. It came with two discs originally and expands the arena introduced in the Project Phantasma by giving us extra arena opponents to fight, from Japanese Armored Core tournament winners being put in the game as well as new in-game characters. Alongside a rarely mentioned ability to create and import custom arenas, which is unique to this game. The campaign is markedly better than Project Phantasma in terms of the depth of story told. It's a revenge story that sort of spirals out into a greater conspiracy, which was cool. 
missions see far more AC pilot encounters than previously seen, which I enjoyed, and there was only really a few missions that were kind of bland. I haven't played any actual multiplayer in the first generation of Armored Core, but I'm sure it's fun. The arena at least gives me some sort of shadow as to how it would play, but eventually I'll get around to it. All in all, a good game package, and I'm slotting this one in B tier. A big improvement over what they experimented with in Project Phantasma. Armored Core 2 kicks things off in the PlayStation 2 era of AC games at the turn of the century with completely new graphics to boot, a slew of brand new parts to tool around with, and a banging soundtrack. The story is a continuation of Armored Core Master of Arena, but on the planet Mars, which is actively being colonized by different corporations and factions vying for control. Your mission briefings are now narrated by client representatives, and it has one of the most memorable VAs in the entire series. We've learned that LCC forces are planning an attack against Zanguchi, one of our satellite cities via the Tarana Mountains. In order to launch a ground-based attack from the Tarana Mountains, the LCC forces will have to cross the bridge spanning the Great Chasm. The bridge is a good place to set up our attack, as it will force the enemy units into a narrow corridor, the proverbial meat grinder, if you will. You could tell he had fun with that. As for gameplay, it has the same mission-based structure as before as well as an arena, except it takes from Project Phantasma a little bit and implements a little bit more cutscenes here and there, which are rudimentary at best but add to some form of significance for the missions to take part in. However, there are a few fully rendered cutscenes that are pretty cool. The game absolutely oozes with style and it really lends to this new, more sci-fi techno style instead of how the first generation was more of this 80s, 90s industrial underground. All in all, it's pretty fun, so I'll put it in B tier. And just because it has more replay value for me personally, I'll be placing it above Master of Arena. Armored Core 2, Another Age, is the follow-up to AC2, and it's good for what it is. It's essentially a large mission expansion with a few new parts and a few technical improvements. All it really is, is a game to hold people over while waiting for Armored Core 3. Which isn't bad, but while most of the missions are pretty fun and the environments varied, it doesn't have much in the way of a story either. It does have some cool moments though. Either way, I don't have much to say about this one, it's just more Armored Core 2, and that's fine. So, I'm putting this one at the bottom of B tier. Armored Core 3, now starting us off on a brand new timeline with new factions, parts, arena, and a new scenario, we get a plethora of new levels that take place in a variety of environments. Which strangely, ACs ended up looking a bit less quality than environments did in terms of rendering. Of course though, not in art style, their design as well as the gameplay is as sharp as ever. Story-wise, the game is definitely more focused. Despite following a sort of rebooted formula from Armored Core 1, it's an entirely new fiction which heads up to an impactful ending that sets up the next game very, very nicely. I'm placing Armored Core 3 at the top of B tier. It's not my favorite exactly, but it's a good title for sure. Armored Core 3 Silent Line. This is by far one of the best entries in the series and one of my personal favorites. The basic movement and weapon mechanics feel tighter than they were in 3 and this game does the amazing thing of having every single mission you experience not feel wasted. You're not going through any filler missions here. Each one challenges you or it advances the story in some way with a distinct skill curve required as you progress. The soundtrack is superb and it creates an atmosphere of bombastic urgency to the combat encounters, leading to some very memorable moments in the entire series. 
The story, coming right off the events of Armor Core 3, creates an interesting mystery as you're thrust into many new environments, and old as well, as you'll be going back to previous levels and seeing how they've changed due to your actions and the progression of events as they've unfolded. Really, just an awesome game that once you start, it's really hard to put down after you get going. I'm putting this right in S tier. This is by far one of my favorites, and I never get bored when replaying it. Armored Core Nexus. Where do I even start with this one? Okay, so it's the follow-up for the story in Silent Line, and it takes a far more of a cinematic approach to its storytelling, and almost every mission has some sort of introductory cutscene, sometimes for the better and other times for the worse, but for real. This game is just flat out boring. It's filled with tons of filler missions, and I almost never got the urge to go and play it when I was going through it the first time, just because it's that monotone, even though the game does have a couple cool moments here and there. And I can't go talking about Nexus without bringing up this infamous mission. Take a look at this garbage. Nexus has the absolute worst in the series when it comes to heat mechanics. It feels like you get hit by anything while you're doing anything and you'll fly into the red. And it doesn't help when most of the parts feel like garbage. Not to mention weird auto quality issues as well. I remember when I first started Nexus and I heard the AC system voice. I thought my emulator was bugging out, but no, it's entirely intentional. Listen to this. Commencing operation. Moon system. Engaging combat mode. No energy sources detected. Area secured. What good can I say about it is that the soundtrack is pretty good. It's actually where we hear Kota Hoshino's style take more presence. And the story at least sets the stage for the better game to come, Last Raven. And honestly, the best part about Nexus is, aside from a few other moments in the campaign, the ending actually caught me off guard and was really cool. And honestly, I did actually like certain things it introduced, like how there are constantly news bulletins describing combat and movements occurring between the different factions of the fight for dominance. I like the aesthetic style, but it's wasted on the poor mechanics and balancing throughout the game. Also, Nexus is a dual disc game, the first being Evolution and the second being Revolution, which takes a bunch of levels from the previous games and reduxes them in Nexus's engine, and a few twists here and there are thrown in, which was alright, but it's hard to look past a lot of the flaws for this game and I have very little desire to go back and replay it. I'm putting Nexus smack at the bottom in D tier. The only reason it doesn't sit in F tier is because I do appreciate what they attempted to do and the content we do have, but it's by far the weakest of the titles for me. By far. Armored Core Ninebreaker, one of those in-betweener titles you don't hear as much about, is basically a holdover for the Nexus follow-up, but it's essentially just a training program for Last Raven, which you're gonna need it. There's training challenges in categories such as attacking, movement, technique, etc., alongside an arena. Otherwise, this is just a game people mainly play online for third generation. And it's good for what it is. It is a very light atmosphere, which is nice and all, and the soundtrack is a masterpiece. Take a listen.
I'm putting this game in A tier, just because it's pretty well balanced and fun to play online, and this is my go-to for third gen multiplayer. Armored Core Formula Front. This is a great game. It's a spin-off title where you build a team of ACs, programming them using artificial intelligence prompts alongside behavior modification, fighting your way in arena matches all the way to the top. I love this game. It's the only game I ever have installed on my mobile device. There's no war, no factional conflict in the game. Armored Core became a sport in this game. And whoever came up with that idea at From Software is a genius. It's really, really fun. And, not to mention, the soundtrack is absolutely amazing. I'm putting Formula Front in A tier, right above Ninebreaker. Armored Core Last Raven is the pinnacle of difficulty for the third generation of Armored Core. This game is absolutely unforgiving, yet the most rewarding. The AI is cheating against you at all times, and events in the level throw you massive curveballs which can send you right back into the garage. Last Raven has the darkest tone of the series, what with its sort of apocalyptic setting. The entire game takes place in 24 hours, there's six endings, a ton of lore, and it's sweet. It's the first game that Miyazaki directed in the series, and it won't be his last, and coming off of the back of Nexus, this game truly realizes what Nexus was building up to and attempting to perform with its cinematic style. I'm putting Last Raven in A tier, above Ninebreaker, because I love the challenge it provides as well as the interconnected world that's woven in the final game of the third generation. Armored Core 4, the first title on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 generation. This is the one I started and grew up with, and it's near and dear to my heart. Everything from its aesthetics, to the music, to the story, to the lore, to the new fast game mechanics, to the allusions to historicity, to the themes, the damn mech designs, even the visuals, it's all right up my alley. And I have fond memories of it and the time in my life I was in when I first played it. This game is excellent, and I would recommend it to anybody before playing Armored Core for answer. This game is the definition of cool, and it sets the stage for what comes next after. Placing this one square in S tier, this is at the top for me. S tier. I'll be rating both 5 and Verdict Day in quick succession because my experience with 5 is very brief. I only was ever able to play story mode because the multiplayer for that game is dead, and that is the primary component. In regards to Verdict Day's multiplayer, it's pretty good for what it does, allowing you to take territory with your team for a faction as well as other modes. As for the 5th gen as a whole, I love the aesthetic. It's clearly inspired from real world conflict in the Middle East and it's captivating. The gameplay is satisfying and everything is balanced together really well in what is a far more tactical experience. I'll be putting 5 in C tier just because all I really got out of it was a short campaign and I'll put Verdict Day at the bottom of A tier. Well, that's that. Feel free to yell at me in the comments, but I hope you enjoyed the video. Here's to Armor Core 6 and a lot more good times heading our way.